quite funny hearing all the questions and, um, and, and the immediate habit is to try and think about, you know, what would be a good answer, you know, or what would be a clever answer or, um, and, um, and then immediately what happens here is that, is that I put the training into practice and I just relax completely. And what's incredible is in relaxing completely, which really just means relaxing the need to focus in on all of the ever-changing descriptions. And the descriptions are endless. You can look at your own experience and this training is very much about you and your experience. And really becoming clear on what is the nature of your experience. So first of all, you can consider and look for yourself and see whether the streams of data, and data is just a term that we use to simplify experience. So there's so many complicated descriptions and conceptual frameworks and you know, dividing up our experience even into thoughts, emotions and sensations. And actually we can just call it all data because it all has the same fundamental quality or property. So it arises spontaneously we notice it and we experience it directly and vividly and, and then it self-releases naturally and um, like, a, like a knot in a snake undoing itself, just effortlessly. And the more I relax with the need to try and describe everything that's going on, then the more comfortable I can be with uh, just the natural flow of things as they are, inclusive of all data, of all experience. And what's interesting is that when I relax the need to continually describe what's going on, so with the example of the questions, you know, immediately starting to describe, well, you know, what does that question mean and what's a good answer and I really haven't got a clue how to respond to that one or whatever the thought may be. Instead, I bring it back to a short moment of just relaxing the descriptions and relying on the open intelligence that is the basis of all of those descriptions. So it's so simple. It's so, so simple. And in that short moment of just complete perceptual openness, there is a clarity of mind, there is an ease of being, there is a warmth of relating that is just naturally present. And the reason that it's naturally present is that that is actually who we are. So the question about trying to work out who we are, and that was a question that had interested me all throughout my life. I studied philosophy and psychology and spirituality and I even thought quantum physics might give me some kind of insight into who I am and, and, and I really enjoyed all of those topics. But why not now try a different approach? Why not try actually when that thought arises, who am I? for example, put this suggestion into practice again there and allow that description just to be as it is for a short moment. See it arises spontaneously, we're aware of that thought or that question and then it self-releases naturally and you're thinking about something else. Or you're aware of the wind blowing in the air or a little gurgling in your stomach or whatever it is. There's this seamless flow of experience and I can just relax and allow that to be as it is. And there's that clarity of thought, there's that warmth of relating, there's that ease of being, and there is the answer to the question of who I am. I, I am this completely open intelligence. I am the intelligence that is experiencing everything. All of my thoughts, all of my emotions, all of my physical sensations. And it is interesting when I try and pin that down and I identify it and describe it because it's impossible. When you try and look for what's looking, you don't find anything. But that's actually a huge success because that means that it, we can just relax and rest as that open intelligence. Because any of the descriptions that we try and pin down open intelligence by are simply more of this same dynamic energy of open intelligence. So the question, who am I, it, it just becomes kind of 
It just becomes as, as light and easy going as all other questions. I know more and more directly in my own experience through testing and repeating the short moments that what I really am is not any of my descriptions or ideas or concepts, but I am simply the intelligence within which they all occur. But there's a few other points that we have in this training that you can check out for yourself. <clears throat> and another key point is the inseparability of data from open intelligence. And the, the terms that we use, um, data, so any thought, emotion, sensation, anything you can describe or perceive, and open intelligence that you can identify just by stopping thinking for a moment. And when you stop thinking, what remains? Just for an instant. There's an alertness, there's something there's something that remains, there's a cognizance, there's the capacity to know. This is naturally present. So you don't need to do anything for this capacity to know to be there. It's fundamental. It's at the basis of all of your experience. Even if you try to stop thinking and the next thought is, I can't stop thinking. The basis of that thought too is the same open intelligence. So we just relax for short moments and continue that instinctive recognition, just allowing the descriptions to flow on by. And um, when I heard something like data are inseparable from open intelligence, like the colour blue is inseparable from the sky, this was actually a huge relief. And I really loved your observation there because I saw that all of my suffering, all of my struggle, all of my difficulty in life came from trying to do something with the data, with the current perception. So, for example, the question of when you're with other people, it's just, just brilliant because... Um, and boundaries with other people. And it's so funny. Um, well, I was just thinking this morning, actually, I woke up in a, in a good mood this morning, and that's sometimes the case and sometimes not. But again, there's an ease around that. I don't need to go into a big description about why I'm so happy this morning or why I'm so miserable. They're more data that I can just allow to flow on by and be as they are. So there's the ease of being regardless of the circumstantial descriptions of the day. And I woke up this morning and um, I was coming out of my um, little place where I'm staying and somebody said, and I, I can speak a bit of Hindi, and somebody said something not particularly pleasant to me first thing in the morning. And I was like, oh, that's, that's, not, very, that's not very nice. It wasn't really bad, but it was, wasn't very pleasant. And completely out of the blue, and I didn't really even know this person. And, and, um, and it was really interesting to see that... Um, there was a stability there in that moment. There was the, the rush of um, more data. Um, there was the data of, how dare you say that? Or, you know, I don't even know you. Or, you know, all of these sort of reactions that come up in that kind of situation. <clears throat> but at the same time, because I've been training up in relying on open intelligence, I could just allow those data to flow on by. And there was a sense of real clarity in terms of... Um, I'm just really clear that I didn't really want to engage with this person. Um, but that was a spontaneous response and there was a complete ease around the whole situation. So I could be really clear with my boundaries, but it wasn't a, um, like a painful reaction that I had to then go into and I would have arrived here in the morning and still been going over that, why did they say that, I was in such a good mood and you know, oh, I can't trust anybody now, or, you know, and that whole description just spinning off into a, you know, endlessly, basically, which is what, what would have happened previously. And now I could see that the whole thing, the, the conversation, it wasn't really a conversation, but, you know, what I heard, my reaction, everything else that happened along the way, all of that was simply more dynamic energy just pouring forth from open intelligence. And I could just relax and allow it to be as it was. And so it's such a practical way to live life. We live life 
from a place of complete open-hearted stability. And this is what you get to know each time you just allow the data to flow on by. Because what you're doing there is switching the emphasis from the data descriptions. So from only thinking and focusing on and describing the thoughts, emotions and sensations that are spontaneously appearing and then self-releasing. I thought that that was all I could do. That's all I used my intelligence and my time and my energy to do. Just to focus in on what I was thinking, what I was feeling, what other people were saying, and what the weather was doing. I'm English. Um, just these descriptions, continual descriptions. I've been given another choice now. For a short moment I can relax and recognize the open intelligence that's the basis of those descriptions. Now do you remember the introduction when you stop thinking for a moment? Just, just relax the need to describe anything that's going on and identify what's looking. Just acknowledge that there is something looking through your eyes, something experiencing everything you're experiencing. Now we only did that introduction a couple of minutes ago but do you see how quickly the habit of them focusing in on the descriptions just kicks in again. So we repeat this recognition for short moments many times. And this is the way the certainty that this open intelligence is actually the basis of everything we're experiencing, that it is inseparable from all of the data, from its own self-appearances, no matter what the descriptions are, becomes our own direct experience in everyday life. And this is stability, because we know the nature of our mind, we know the nature of what we're experiencing, we know that we can allow it to be as it is, we can gain confidence in that through testing that for short moments. Is it safe to allow um, something like sadness to be as it is? And that's a brilliant question too. I might answer all the questions. That Just because the things like sadness and what we've labelled as negative experiences, we've labelled them as negative because they really seem to have a power over us and they really seem to be something that we needed to do something about. Um, so I know for myself with something like sadness, I had all kinds of ways of dealing with that. Um, so a few examples, I would go and try and surround myself with happy people to try and sort of distract myself from the sadness. I would go somewhere else. I would, I would try and find a cause for the sadness and quite often it seemed to me to be the place where I was. So I would go to another place and I'd be all right there until I got sad and then I'd have to go somewhere else. I saw many beautiful places. Um, what else did I do? Uh, oh, smoke a joint, that's a good one. Numb it out, just numb it out. Numb it out, just, just damp it down. Um, sometimes I do really intense physical exercise. You know, just, just get it out, you know, whatever it is, get it out. And those approaches work, kind of. So they provide a temporary relief. You know, I can replace the sadness with something else or I can distract myself from it, or I can numb it down. But the only problem is, is that the sadness just comes back at some point. And what I saw for myself was that I had told myself I was a happy person. And when I felt something like sadness, that really was a sign that there was something wrong. So I really did have to work hard at that. And as I began to test allowing myself to be as I was for short moments, allowing the flow of data to be as it was, then things like sadness that I had had all of these strategies for avoiding or replacing or doing something with and I saw that actually I, I, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to live my life in that way like a, like a, a puppet on a string just being dragged around by whatever emotion just happens to be there or whatever thought just pops into my mind. I'm going to test relying on open intelligence and, and what was surprising was that I felt everything more intensely, particularly some of the negative experiences. And so it was really important for me to have support and to be able to come to a meeting like this or a training 
and to ask about it. Because it seemed like, well, hold on, the, the training's not working, or, you know, wh why am I feeling sadder than I've ever felt before? But it's actually a good thing, and it is the capacity to open up to everything about myself, including the things that I'd never dared to look at before, and to see that actually I was capable of facing everything directly. And that when I did find the courage to allow sadness to be as it was, just for a short moment, and this is so, so, such a beautiful approach, it's not like oh, I've got to just be sad or I've got to be sad all morning, it's an instantaneous recognition that the sadness too is inseparable from open intelligence, like the breeze is inseparable from the air. So just for one instant to recognize that. And the habit of then collapsing into the stories about it was so strong that I could only do it for one short moment. But those short moments of actually recognizing the fundamental nature of something like sadness was so, so powerful. And what I saw was that each time I did that, I was gaining more confidence that I could allow even the negative things to be as they were. And the more I repeated that, the more the same stability was recognized to be the basis of the negative things too. But not in an intellectual way. I could understand the evenness and the equalness of all appearances within this vast expanse of open intelligence. I got that intellectually. But when I felt sad, that intellectual understanding didn't do me any good. I was just sad. And I was so used to collapsing into those stories. So to test out for short moments, and the other thing I did, I, I, if you go to the back of the meeting or to the website, there's hours and hours of free media, free to download. And these audio files, these talks I was listening to, they just reminded me to relax and allow everything to be as it was. So even when I didn't find that, that strength kind of from just within myself, whatever that means, um, I would listen to one of these talks and it would remind me that sadness too is a data stream appearing within open intelligence and I could relax for a short moment and allow it to flow on by. And so I tested that out too and I saw that it was actually okay to allow sadness to be as it was, that I could do that. And then I'd collapse into my stories about, okay, well, it's, I've got to leave here again, I'm sad. And then I would repeat that short moment. And there was the openness. There was the same perceptual openness that was the basis of my happy descriptions. Instinctively and directly recognized, not as an intellectual concept. And that was where the real relief and power was found. And the empowerment is then to decide how I want to proceed from that recognition. And it's a place of complete um, empowerment because I'm not a victim to those thoughts and emotions and experiences. I wasn't a victim to the slightly unkind thing that somebody said to me this morning. I wasn't a victim to my sad feeling when I woke up. I'm not a victim to my physical sensations. That's a great place to practice. Physical sensations. And if you all stop now, you can probably identify something strange that's going on somewhere in your body. Take a short moment and allow that to be as it is. Can that be found to have a nature separate or apart from open intelligence? Check it out. Keep checking it out. And this is where you will find the stability. And just to finish, the, the term open intelligence, I, I really like, and you, you could call it whatever you like, but through having a common terminology, it helps us to speak about it with each other. So if I suddenly started speaking about short moments of blue elephants, <laughs> it's a possible option, but it's actually much more helpful and useful if we have a common term like open intelligence. And then we can all understand that very easily. <clears throat> so throughout history, that recognition of the inseparability has had many different terms. But um, it's helpful to have one term that we can all understand. And then data. Everything you experience, everything you're perceiving right now, it's a stream of data appearing within this vastness of intelligence. That simplicity is so beautiful.
so empowering, makes everything so clear and so easy. And that's, that's really all I wanted from life, was to be clear, relaxed, comfortable, and, and feel like I was actually the powerful human being that I knew I was.